Most loving Father, you have brought us to the beginning of a new day. As our eyes open to the morning light, our mouths praise your beauty and goodness in the splendor and design of your creation. We accept the renewed gift of life and grace with gratitude. We offer you our every thought, word, and act today, and pray that it be in accordance with your will and in furtherance of your glory. Make us instruments of your presence to others. Use our minds to understand the big picture, our hearts full of passion and purpose, and our hands to build partnerships. Let us be adequate persons to become architects of change and fulfill our promise of elevating lives of communities and people we serve. When evening comes, gather us again, safe under the shelter of your wings, to rest confirmed in your love. And with assurance that with your help, we have taken one more step towards a better world. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone, and maayong hapon sa tanan. We are back this afternoon for another episode of the CGM Talk online series. Ako da ay si Rave, and I'll be your host for today. I am the program officer for events of Casa Gorordo Museum. The CGM, Talk is on, the CGM Talk online series is one of the many programs of the Culture and Heritage Unit of the Ramon Aboitis Foundation Incorporated. This is to promote Cebuano culture and heritage. Aside from being um, the Love Month, um, February, no? we are here to talk about the National Arts Month. So our topic for this afternoon talk is all about our local art scene and how it reacted during the pandemic. For those of you who'd like to uh, watch our previous talks, Katong Pag 2020, they are still available in our Facebook page. Now, for today, we have a very special uh, guest speaker. He is a Jesuit priest and a Filipino contemporary artist who currently is lecturing at the uh, Fine Arts Department of the Ateneo de Manila University in Quezon City. He is self-taught um, who developed his artistic interest by attending art workshops, art classes, art conferences, and art exhibitions, as well as integrating art into his studies in theology and his priestly work in pastoral ministry. In 2009, he founded the Alternative Contemporary Art Studio at the garage of Sacred Heart Parish here in Cebu City. It is to promote contemporary art. His latest curatorial project was Yellow Am Ambiguities at the Ateneo Art Gallery, together with the poet and art writer, Carlo Mar Duana, who co-curated the exhibition that explored the complexity of the color yellow in the Philippine context. Currently, um, since the lockdown in March 2020, be, um, 
Father Jason has been arranging flowers as part of the ongoing art project of Arrange and Enliven. These floral arrangements are installed either at the studio of Jesuit um, Communications in Solonox building or at the Church of Yesu Ateneo de Manila for the daily online masses. Please welcome our speaker for today, Father Jason D. S.J. Hello, Hello. may hapon sa tanan. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. Yes, Father. Uh, yeah, Father. Wala ray uh, uh, one or? Uh, dag om. You know, it's a uh, bit cloudy and dark skies, no? And uh, we thank Casa Gorodo Museum and, of course, Rafi for arranging this uh, talk on art as a response, no? During the time of the pandemic. Okay, so Father, I will not hold you long. Um, let's jump ahead into um, your discussion. So again, please welcome Father Jason D. Okay, thank you, Rave, And we thank all the online viewers via Facebook Live for joining us this afternoon. And my uh, reflections for today will be regarding how artists in the Philippines, especially in major cities in our country, like Manila, Cebu, Bacolod, Iloilo, Dumaguete, are responding to the pandemic caused by COVID-19 virus. No? I'll be highlighting some fundraising projects, artists' initiatives, and emerging modes of art and education through social media platforms. And in terms of scope and limitation, uh, this is not an exhaustive survey, okay? Uh, this is based on my engagements with several art projects and for my own research, uh, as I use this uh, for my art appreciation classes. Next slide, please. Uh, there are four aspects in this presentation, just to give you an outline of what uh, I'm going to discuss uh, with you. The first one is online art fundraising exhibitions for targeted sectors and artists. The second one is art projects that deals with some issues and situations during the pandemic, like exposing quarantine situations, reimagining social interactions, and coping with psycho-emotional stress, okay? And the third one is the artist advocacies and actions that reflect and respond to people's situations in, in our country aggravated by the pandemic and other social political issues. And we took note of the initiatives of the, the concerned artists of the Philippines, artist Kiri Delena, Bonnie Juan, and an artist from Cebu, Cologne. And the last consideration uh, would be consisting of the continuing art and education program. So let's start with the first one, online art fundraising projects. Uh, the first one is the art fundraising project for UP Jeepney drivers who drove within uh, UP campus and also to SM North. No? And the title of the fundraising project is Para Paraan Pabot Naman. Next, please. And it zero in on the situation of UP jeepney drivers affected by the lockdown in force due to COVID-19 pandemic. And many of them have no uh, driving uh, jobs right now. Okay. You can see some of them along CP Garcia with their placards uh, asking for help. Okay. Next, please. And uh, this uh, para paraan paabot naman as an art drive was spearheaded by artist Lena Kubangbang and MMU. Uh, to raise funds from June to August 2020, okay, to provide GP drivers and their families with uh, food packs, no, and it was coursed through UP COVID-19 response volunteers 
for the distribution. And another issue that they are raising, not just uh, during the pandemic, is the impending phase out of their units brought on by the government program to modernize jeepneys. Okay, next please. And some of the artworks that I have selected for our presentation today relate to the jeepney as an icon, as a transportation, as experienced by drivers and commuters. For example, in the work of Dansoy Kokila, it's a jeepney signboards of uh, Ikot or Toke. No? This is the regular and opposite routes within the UP campus. Okay, And he, there are six jeepney routes in UP, the Ikot, the Toke, the Pantranco, SM North, Felcoa, and Katipunan. Next artist, please. Uh, Franz Alvarez, uh, uh, these are watercolor uh, drawings that are published in a zine in full color print. And the title of this work is Ladies in Jeepneys. And this is her own observation, a kind of diary of women she met in the jeepney during the pandemic. Next, please. Uh, Hendrel Baltasar Pag. Kaliwanagan uh, have this very intricate pen and ink watercolor on paper uh, suggestive of the things that the drivers would have inside their jeepney. Uh, you will see rosary statues of uh, Mary and Santo Nino, uh, an or mundane object like a basahan or an iconic uh, uh, image of the Sarau jeepney, an image of a horse, no? Next, please. Uh, this is the work of Christina Kisubing Ramilo, uh, entitled Pride. This is a cold cast marble uh, from the soap Pride, okay? And when you look at it, it's an essay on health and sanitation, especially during the pandemic, we are taught to wash our hands properly. And how the humble act of washing hands become an antithesis, perhaps to the brand of the soap bar Pride. Okay. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, the actual size of the work. And another work is by Poklong Anading. Next, please. Uh, Uh, next slide. Uh, okay. Uh, the work entitled Maki Ki Abut Po, okay, 2001 to 2020. It's a generational work of Puklong Anading. It's a video sculpture with co uh, wooden coin box and video, okay. Uh, an interesting idea of how in the jeepney itself when passengers pass on uh, the payment from one passenger to another until it reached the driver and it's a kind of performance a performance of reaching out uh, in helping hands as a kind of social practice in the everyday life and according to uh, Puklong Anading next uh, slide please uh, there was a camera that was concealed in the bag uh, and is passed on from one person to another while the the phrase makiki abot po is uh, constantly said okay another work uh, by Jose Gamboa is a series entitled uh, Sarau Sardines a watercolor in paper uh, this is an image of how congested uh, commuting is, especially here in Manila and in Cebu, uh, inside the jeepney. And the sardines in a can becomes that metaphor of this congestion, okay? And how during this pandemic, uh, especially during the general ECQ, uh, we have less more uh, passengers, no? Because of the safety, safety protocols, okay? You will see prices in this uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation because these are uh, 
images uploaded in the Facebook account of Para Paraan so that the buyers who wants to get this work as well as support the fundraising campaign would know how much they're going to, to pay and donate to the jeepney drivers. Next photo, please. Uh, in this photograph, you will see the recipients uh, of the goods uh, that came from the Paraparaan uh, Paabot Naman Art Fund. And these are the jeepney drivers who received the food packs, okay? Next photo, please. And this is an image that I screenshot from the Facebook of Paraparaan Paabot Naman. And this is their own way of uh, reaching out to people seek, seeking for assistance, okay? Uh, with the help of our hardworking distribution partner, COVID-19 response volunteers of UP, we have reached at this. Um, uh, once again, we're so grateful to all who supported and participated in this uh, art project. Next, please. Uh, another important uh art project uh, was Raising Green, a lockdown edition. It was to help the online, uh, the frontliners, especially with uh, their protective uh, gears and to support also the uh, artist welfare because there's a certain percentage from the sale of the work that goes to the artist, okay? Uh, next, please. Uh, this is curated by Leda Kubangbang in collaboration with La Salle Green Hills Batch 94. And there were 33 artists who participated in this exhibition, online exhibition. Uh, next, please. One of them is uh, Eric Encinares. Uh, the title of the work is Contagious, where he had portraits of artists. Uh, and in this uh, painting, he featured Poklong Anading and the, the image is donning a face mask, okay? How the face mask uh, becomes an icon during the pandemic, suggesting of protection as well as of fear, okay? Next slide, please. You also have artists from Indonesia, like Rudy, contributing to this uh, campaign. Uh, so in a way, we have international artists participating in the online relief uh, program. Next, please. In this uh, cut-out work of uh, Ryan William L. entitled Gom. Gom is a character in Diablo game. He is the Lord of Gluttony. Perhaps in this work of uh, Ryan, he's suggesting of the excessive, uh, excesses rather, of other people in this time of the pandemic when majority are in want and in dire need, okay? Next uh, slide, please. Uh, this is the work of Liv in Luan, entitled, I would like to be a tree now, okay? Uh, when I look at this work, it seems that it's a kind of atonement because of the exploitation and abuses humankind did to nature. And as part of that atonement, it is a desire for an artist or suggestion of the artist for us to be at one with nature, okay? Next, please. Uh, the next work is by the artist uh, Jonah Soleta, okay? And this is Corona Stock Pile. It's, it's like you have to see the, the, the character uh, in this uh, painting, like the corona, uh, affecting people from uh, the womb to adulthood. No? So how COVID-19 virus is affecting us uh, in all stages of our life. And we also have the work of uh, Romeo Lee. It's an oil on canvas, doggy doggy. And you see this child holding his pet dog amidst a dark uh, and burning background. You see a sense of fear, uh, but it's also comforting uh, in a way to have this child protecting the uh, white dog. 
Okay. And we all also experience this kind of situation during this pandemic that as we are afraid of this pandemic, we also feel comfort from other people. There is this kind of uh, contrasting experiences. Okay. And we had an opportunity to talk to one of the organizers, uh, Migs Camacho at the Radio Katipunan, hosted by Father Non Alfonso at the Jesuit Hour last April 29, 2020. And he said that it's a kind of Bayanihan culture in this, uh, during this pandemic when people and different sectors in our art uh, community are helping, uh, especially the frontliners and artist uh, welfare. And he noted that online may not be an ideal platform for the exhibition, but it is a best platform during the pandemic. Okay, so we had a nice chat with uh, Mix Camacho. And next slide, please. And according to Lena Kubangbang, when she was interviewed about this uh, raising uh, green project, she said, and I quote, "Art and helping goes hand in hand, talaga." It's innate in artists to be altruistic. For the buyers, it's a good motivation for them. Someone said it's a win-win situation, buying art at the same time, being able to help. I think this is a kind of motivation, especially for fundraising uh, in the arts during the pandemic. Uh, next slide, please. And Lena was uh, inspired by this open letter by the writer, choreographer, Andrew Simonet. Uh, and the quote uh, says, Dear artists, this is what we are trained for. This moment is a health crisis, a brutal one. It is also a crisis of meaning. It is a crisis of connection, of story. It is a crisis of who we are to each other and to the agreements that hold us together. And those are the things we artists know how to work on, okay? Very inspiring, uh, inspiring note on collaboration and what it means to be artists in this time of the pandemic. And next slide, please. You will see the report of Raising Green. They're very transparent. Uh, how many works are sold, uh, the total number, the total amount collected, 5 million for 100, uh, 91,600 and they're able to distribute 3,500 PPEs in different hospitals in Manila and also in Oriental Mindoro, okay? And they thank uh, K-Line Logistics Philippines for helping them distribute these PPEs, okay? Next slide, please. And I'm also grateful for them because uh, Racing Green also extended help to uh, a community that I help in St. Joseph uh, Chapel in Batasan, Quezon City. So I told them to ospong pusong pasasalamat sa kawa ng St. Joseph sa biyaya ng relief goods na tatanggap nila. Meron na silang pang piyesta bukas sa kapisan ng kanilang patron na si San Jose na manggagawa. Salamat sa Racing Green team at mga partner institutions nito. Okay? Another art project during the pandemic, uh, next slide please, is Uling Ling, uh, consisted of two words, Uling and Uling, Uling Ling, meaning uh, the ringing of bells and literally uh, charcoal, okay? Uh, next slide please. And uh, this is initiated by Artletics Incorporated to help uh, communities who are affected by the fire. So imagine communities, <coughs> excuse me, who are suffering from this pandemic at the same time being affected by huge fires. You know? And to support uh, these communities, the Artletics community uh, had a fundraising uh, uh, online uh, activity. And I will sh be showing you some of the works. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, this one is the uh, quote from Artugon uh, about their initiative of Uling Ling. Uh, 
in June and July, there were communities that were ravaged by fire. So bereft of sale, safe shelters compounded further by the quartet measures being implemented in the current coronavirus pandemic was left uh, of years of dedication, of dedicated toil, like books, clothing, plates, beds, furniture, letters, photographs, radio, TV, uh, sets, medals has turned to dust and charcoal, mementos and distractions, seeking transcendence through artistic creation. So what uh, the group did, they provided artists with uh, uling, charcoal that were gathered from the fire. And artists used ch these charcoals in order to create artworks that were for sale to benefit the uh, these communities. Next slide, please. Some of the works included the works of uh, Bayani Galera, entitled Reconstructing House, Rebuilding Home Number One. Okay, so this is a play on positive and negative spaces and the desire to rebuild uh, the home. Okay, not just reconstructing houses. Okay, uh, the second work uh, from this uh, art fund drive is by. Hindrail Baltasar Pagkaliwagan, a uh, life through concrete cracks suggestive of the growth despite the hard, uh, difficult situation, okay? And we can learn this from nature, okay? Uh, how nature uh, also blooms in concrete pavements, okay? Uh, the next work uh, is by Ali Garibay. She's one of the uh, organizers. Uh, the title is Pag-asa number two, charcoal on paper. Uh, it is an image of a house being eaten up by fire with a billowing black smoke in the horizon. Okay, but the white use there could be suggestive of the fire itself or light. Okay, there's a sense of ambiguity. And I, I like this next work is a portrait of a uh, a boy. Uh, in the Scarred series of Lori Lee Ann. Uh, and in her testimony, next slide, please. Uh, she said, and I quote, next slide, please. Uh, the first time I experienced uh, a fire in our neighborhood, I immediately felt the fear. Okay, afraid that our house might be might be the next, uh, scared to lose uh, everything that matters to me, and scared that someone will hurt my family. I'm thinking of the fear of the children who experience a fire in Barangay Addition Hills and their inability for what is happening and how it shaped their personality. I also think of the same fear is pushing parents to fight for the sake of their children. And because of the experience of fear, that is why citizens strive harder to continue their circumstances. And this kind of personal testimony of the artist, Lori Lay An, is a very touching testimony because uh, it testifies uh, to us how empathy becomes a bridge for other artists also to reach out to others, especially children affected by the fire and pandemic. Another group is Ogatlahi Collective. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a, a collective of artists, art enthusiasts, and critics. And their common goal is to creatively express visual resistance to the existing oppressive social order. Uh, they are the ones making the effigies, especially during the State of the Nation addresses of the Presidents. And uh, what I feature in this presentation uh, is next slide, please. Is there 2019 uh, Sona effigy entitled Shokoi? Uh, the image here is a merman uh, failing to protect its own uh, seas from invaders. Okay. Uh, perhaps this is a commentary uh, directly. Uh, commenting on how the government is responding to the issue of the West Philippine Seas. Okay, uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, 
you will see the the members of the ugat lahi and the next slide please after the parade and the protest uh they have a ritual of burning the effigy and the run around the effigy carrying banners and chanting uh, voices of dissent, okay? And during this pandemic, uh, Ugat Lahi, uh, next slide please, organized an exhibition entitled New Abnormal, okay? Uh, this New Abnormal uh, is her own take on how our situation is in the pandemic has brought a new order or a new disorder, okay? Uh, and they try to present uh, how this pandemic has actually exposed how broken our system uh, is and how vulnerable people are gravely affected by it. And there are many artists who participated in this online exhibition that was posted uh, via Instagram and uh, Facebook, okay? Uh, some of the works that I'd like to highlight is the work of Raquel de Loyola Cruz entitled Mask and uh, embroidered are two words, error and terror, okay? The next slide, please. Uh, Leroy New uh, created this uh, face shield of terror uh, made from plastic bottles, cable ties, and plastic tube. Uh, Leroy New actually exhibited also at Casa Gorordo when he came back after his art residency in uh, Australia. And right now, he has been making this uh, face shields out of plastic bottles, cable ties, and plastic tubes. And uh, in this image, you will see a statement, uh, activism is not terrorism, okay? Next slide, please. Uh, this is the work of Mervyn uh, Pimentel entitled D. Uh, but you have an image of a uh, Fang figure uh, terrorizing people to death, okay? Next photograph uh, is the work of Christopher Samora. Uh, Christopher and Mertz were two organizers of this uh, new abnormal uh, fund drive. And in this work of Christopher, uh, Rhesus Bocetto number 0520, you see uh, a person holding a, a wood perhaps a uh, flagpole, okay? And you don't know what the end of the uh, wood, no? But the muscle and the firmness of the hold suggest this strong resistance, okay? And the last one uh, is the work of E.G. Rodriguez, uh, Begotten 7. You will see an image here of a decaying uh, flesh, uh, or spirit begotten by the ill response of uh, our government during this time of the pandemic. So these are sample works that were sold online uh, as part of the initiative of Ugatlahi and uh, entitled The New Abnormal. Okay, And the second part of this presentation would be Artists initiated art projects. Okay, and the first one that I share with you is this uh, video project uh, organized by Project Space Filipinas, based in Lukban, Quezon, and it is organized by the artist Leslie D. Chavez. And in this slide, you will see an open call for submission uh, for a one-minute video that describes. Uh, Critically, one's live during the quarantine. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, there is an open call video uh, posted uh, 
in the in YouTube. No, I will just give you a a quick uh, view of it. Uh, This was posted on the Facebook uh, page of Project Space Filipinas, courtesy of Leslie Chavez, and all, was also uploaded in YouTube. Okay, many people responded to this video call, and one of the notable uh, videos uh, is the work of the Jan Korachea. Next slide, please. And I want you to just uh, look at the video for a minute. Uh, and it talks about uh, the interior dwelling of the uh, filmmaker, Diane Korechea, her lives with her family and her child, as well as the exterior place uh, in Quezon. Uh, next slide, please. So the next slide will have the video of the Jan Korachea entitled Inside and Outside. So we'll just wait for a few uh, minutes. Uh, we are experiencing a technical difficulty. So let's be uh, patient for a while because uh, uh, we know that there is a storm uh, outing uh, that's affecting uh, many parts of the country. So we'll just wait for the Casa Gorordo uh, team to share with us the uh, PowerPoint presentation again. So uh, we know we are now viewing the video of the Yan Korachea. Can we play it? Uh, I just want you to see the images. Maybe the images uh, that you will see in this uh, video would be images that you also see in your own uh, uh, experiences during the lockdown. Empty streets. empty stalls in the market. Okay, uh, the next project is uh, entitled Paper Panic Project. Uh, you will find uh, this project in Instagram. Uh, there are 330 posts uh, and Paper Panic uh, is inspired by how tissue paper has been a, a commodity and as well as a luxury uh, because of the need and how artists express uh, their own experiences in the pandemic using tissue paper, okay? So this is an online exhibition and the new platform is the uh, uh, Instagram, okay? And the, the first artist that I'd like to uh, show you is the work of Cologne. Uh, it is a tissue paper with printed uh, logos of Louis Vuitton. And 
how a simple commodity uh, object like a tissue roll becoming luxury, okay? Uh, meaning is expensive, uh, sought for, okay? The next, the next interesting work is the work of uh, uh, Nice with Ventura. Uh, it consisted of tissue papers and leaves, uh, uh, perhaps paper or leaves, a choice of this one uh, and whichever is av available, or an essay on how tissues are part of the organic uh, materials like leaves and trees. And you also have the work of arti artist and curator Con Cabrera. Uh, here, this is a plant uh, with blue dye that is allowed to bleed into the tissue paper. So the notion of bleeding, uh, not just physical bleeding, but perhaps uh, bleeding into our uh, income, into our uh, resources, uh, being depleted, okay? Being drained, okay? And uh, the other one uh, is a work of uh, Dr. Karayum. Uh, and here you see a, a small figurine with uh, red paint and it is white by uh, tissue. And uh, it's suggestive, the act itself is wiping blood, okay? Uh, and when the curator of, uh, when the facilitator, he doesn't want to be called an, a curator, when the facilitator was uh, interviewed about his intentions of this uh, paper panic project, he said, uh, and I quote, uh, next slide please. I thought of collecting works on tissue and toilet paper as a record of time, a kind of diary of what's happening using visual language, the drawings, illustrations, videos during this pandemic. And he started this last March 11, 2020. And then there are already many people who uh, participated in it uh, because that was also the announcement uh, of the lockdown and people started to panic. Uh, and then there was a panic buying, okay? Uh, and uh, the facilitator continued that I want the platform about solidarity. It is uh, important to have a voice and a vision using art and creativity to archive the time. So in order for us to have a memory of what happened to us during the lockdown, the panic that we experienced, okay? And another, uh, uh, artist initiative is the uh, Bruja Bar, okay, by uh, artist Ling Kisumbing Ramilo, where she invited her uh, colleagues, artists, friends to post a picture with the logo, imagined logo of Bruja Bar, and they have to tell a story, a real or imagined, and also the characters. It becomes like a storytelling. Uh, with friends, fictional or not, in order to to share stories, no, and uh, you can uh, state the venue, the place of the bar, okay, who are in the bar, uh, and what is the story or occasion that happened during the uh, during that particular time period, okay. Next slide, please. So you have an, uh, a contribution by Stephanie Frondoso, uh, how she etched the letters on the banana leaf, okay? Uh, Bruja Bar, okay? And her story of the secret garden in the magical uh, Mount Manahaw. There is a pop-up bar set up there, like a picnic. And the last one is the uh, fictional bar uh, created by Lena Kubangbang, and it represents uh, Noah's Flood, but a more contemporary uh, version. Uh, I'd just like to read it for you because it's just short. It's written on water, not on sand. 
it's flooded for 40 days. Noah became uh it's difficult to read the small letters. Anyway, aguavite, okay, water is life. It is now day uh vintner after. Okay, aguavite, it is now day one a three. I've seen doors and maps. Water had become sand. Time is not contained anymore. It is now endless. Mother has shown me all this. Sometime in November, there was a dream where I had a child and also a mother, a white cat named Dolores, a sparrow planting seeds in the building's foundation. So it provides you with a, a kind of escape uh, to, to have a conversation with friends of their imagined place, uh, setting, and characters uh, during the time of the pandemic, especially during the quarantine. And uh, the last initiative is uh, an initiative uh, as part of the invitation of Gray Center uh, Art and Inquiry in Chicago, uh, where curator and artist historian Patrick Flores was invited to propose a project. And he invited me, along with artists Rocky Cahigan and Mark Salvatos, in the archival project entitled Register of Deeds, uh, a registration of what happened uh, during the pandemic and an archive of instincts, an annotated archive of two curatorial projects and current projects in the Philippine of Philippine artists during the pandemic in Manila. Okay, we will also have a conversation uh, with Patrick and Mark Salvatus and Rocky Higan this coming Thursday at 9 30 in the morning. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, the next slide is showing you the different areas uh, where this uh, archiving and uh, happened. Uh, we have in uh, La Union uh, for the project of Rocky Cahigan. We have Metropolitan Museum of Manila and Cultural Center of the Philippines for the curatorial projects of uh, Patrick Flores. And also Bontoc Mountain Province for uh, the ration series of uh, Rocky Cahigan. Uh, Rajo Katipuna, Nuyola Heights for my project entitled Arrange and Enliven. And Load Nadito Projects, uh, the home exhibition for Ryoji by Mark Salvatus. And the specific art projects is in the are in the succeeding slides. Uh, the first one, next slide please, is the uh, uh, two photographs that Mark would upload on his Facebook page uh, and Instagram. Uh, it's a home exhibition for Yoji series, uh, and uh, the this is a child of uh, Mark and Mayumi, and imagine uh, Yoji uh, in quarantine, and as parents, Mark and Mayumi are also creatively engaging their child, and one way of engaging him is through art. And in this fo first photograph, you will see a vegetable, uh, upo. Uh, that is turned into a, f a kind of flying uh, insect with uh, wings uh, using Japanese uh, paper fans. And the next picture is Yuji posing with it. And the next uh, slide is the work of Rocky Kahigan, uh, the Relief Good series, uh, Still Lives in, uh, in Plastic. Uh, suspended. Uh, you see here meat uh, and the fish. In some paintings, you will see vegetables, fruits, no? uh, and the title of the work is No Relief uh, Chaos uh, since May 2020. Uh, so we acknowledge that there are some help uh, offered, especially from the government, but how uh, it was also inadequate. Uh, it was not sufficient. Uh, and for my project, uh, it was entitled, uh, it's entitled rather, uh, Arrange and Enliven, where 
since 2020 of March, I was arranging flowers uh, as part of the online uh, liturgy of Radyo Katipunan. And ever since March 2020, I have been uh, arranging flowers. And this kind of uh, arrangement is uh, influenced from the Western art, uh, especially from the tradition of uh, still life uh, paintings, and also from the Oriental, which is the uh, Ikebana school. So I'm not trained as an Ikebana uh, artist, but through my own research and my own engagement with nature, I try to approximate uh, the art style. So next slide, please. So these are the photographs. Uh, uh, there are more than uh, 200 photographs now, okay? Uh, and I post the photographs daily on my Facebook. Uh, and during this Lent, uh, it's an extra challenge because I'm just using uh, twigs and leaves without uh, flowers. Okay? And... The second to the last one would be artist advocacies and actions during the pandemic, okay? So the first one would be uh, artist fundraising projects. The, se the second one would be artist initiative. And the third one I'd like to share with you would be artist advocacies and actions. And the first uh, one is the, the issue of uh, Manila Bay Shore with Dolomite Sands. This is part of DNR Shore Rehabilitation Projects. Next slide, please. And many uh, artists and environmentalists are uh, against this kind of uh, program. So they advocated for food, not dolomite, uh, instead of the, the amount uh, used for buying the dolomite uh, and the installation of dolomite sand uh, on the shore of uh, Ross Boulevard. Would they would prefer food uh, related perhaps to relief goods, no? And some are also suggesting plant mangroves uh, rather than dump dolomites. Okay, kain hindi buhangin. Okay, so these are uh, part of the artist, uh, uh, the activist uh, call uh, against uh, this uh, project. Okay, and one artist. Uh, Cologne from Cebu. He actually collected uh, sand from the uh, from the Visayas, uh, we where the dolomites were excavated actually, and he posted in his uh, Facebook uh, last September 25, 2020, that you can buy the legit Visayas white sand, 25 grams per pack at 500 pesos. Okay, this is his own. Uh, satirical uh, response to the Dolomite issue, okay? And next slide, please. And we know that Cologne as a street artist is in, in also interested in engaging uh, capitalist systems. Uh, Cologne as his street name is actually uh, uh, representing uh, Cologne Street in Cebu as well as the idea of colonization and how the current colonization is by the capitalist uh, system, okay? Next slide, please. And recently, uh, Cologne uh, participated in Art in the Park. Uh, this is a latest image of uh, that you will find his virtual gallery, uh, which was presented uh, by Vinyl on Vinyl. And this is his VR studio which consisted of furniture and other artworks. And they hired a guard uh, entitled Erin, uh, Agta sa Kasagingan. And the universe that they have created in this virtual space in is entitled Parallel Space, okay? The sky is our collage and the ground is also a painting, okay? And they also have a gallerist uh, who's uh, attending to their virtual gallery entitled Sandara. Okay, and watch out for the FB live uh, of this uh, gallery. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, Concerned artists of the Philippines is another group that are uh, active in promoting rights of the 
farmers, artists, uh, fresh people, uh, and people who are affected by the campaign against uh, illegal drugs. And uh, EJK as a result of that uh, campaign. No? And this is his, their poster right now, Artists Fight Back. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. And there are so many activities of CAP. Uh, we all know that CAP was uh, co-founded in 1983 by Lino Broca, the National Artist for Cinema, uh, the Concerned Artists of the Philippines. It's an organization of artists, musicians, writers, filmmakers, cultural workers from various disciplines that works toward a nationalist, people-oriented art and culture. So there is this social dimension of the art and many of the artworks here are about activism uh, and many artists uh, involved here are social socially engaged with the situation okay uh, next uh, slide please so for example in the last uh, sona 2020 uh, they invited people from different uh, political spectrum uh, Pulakaman, Dilawan Kaman, it's important that we come together uh, in order to be united as people to express our stand for our basic rights and freedoms. Okay, And one of the issues that uh, CAP is addressing, next slide please, is the terrorism bill. Uh, this is a screenshot of the PDF of anti-terrorism bill RA number 11479 okay by the republic uh, representative congress of the philippines and next slide please uh, they did not only bring the issue in the streets by rallying and protesting they also uh, went to court uh, in order to file a petition against the terror law next slide please and this is their statement Together, we seek to nullify this new law which violates press freedom and freedom of expression. We appeal that the Supreme Court find merit in this and in numerous other petitions filed seeking to nullify RA-11479. And we hope that it grants a temporary restraining order and writ for a preliminary injunction and in the long run declare it unconstitutional and void. Next slide, please. And when they brought the petition to court, uh, many artists uh, joined them. They had a kind of a parade and a performance. Uh, in this photograph, you will see uh, artists uh, joining in the protest, uh, wearing this uh, protest gear with target signs. Uh, and one of them carrying the flag of the concerned artists of the Philippines. Okay. And next slide, please. As they are filing uh, a petition to uh, the Supreme Court with regards to the anti-terrorism bill, they continue to uh, uh, advocate for the rights, especially for people who are victims of actual judicial killings. As the pandemic goes on, we, there are also ongoing uh, killings and violence. So in this uh, collage of photographs submitted by artists, uh, calling to stop the killings okay next slide please and this is the common advocacy for the ones uh, uh empathize sympathizing with the cause we support an in independent investigation we clamor for justice to end the killings we declare decry now how the anti terrorism law enables impunity we uphold freedom of expression the right to life we continue to speak out as artists and concerned citizens, artista ng bayan tuloy tuloy ang labanan. Okay? And our art, next slide please, artist uh, Kiri Dalena De, uh, also campaigned uh, to stop the killings. And in these photographs, you will see uh, supporters from different parts of the world. For example, in Berlin, Germany. Next slide please. Uh, 
also in another part of uh, Germany, okay? Uh, so bringing the campaign not just locally but also abroad. Aside from this uh, ad advocating for, for life and stop of violence, they are also supporting the plight of the uh, frontliners. Next one, please. Uh, they also uh, have an alternative uh, tribute to people's heroes uh, during the National Heroes Day. Uh, next slide, please. They also support uh, farmers. And during the month of the uh, farmers, you have a series of activities uh, in order to support uh, the farmers. And this is uh, initiated by another group, uh, SACA, Sama Samang Artista Para Sa Kilusang Agrario, Artist Alliance for Genuine, Genuine Land Reform and Rural Development. Okay. Uh, next photo, please. Next slide, please. And they also have specific uh, call every time there is uh, violence and killings. Uh, for example, ne uh, before po, uh, the slide before this. Libing hindi gera, respeto hindi dahas. This is the call for solidarity and sympathy with the political prisoner Reina May Masino in condemning the conduct of PNP and BJMP as Baby River was laid to rest. Okay. Another artist, uh, still uh, uh, in line with activism and also upholding the right of the press and uh, uh, freedom is Juan uh, Boni Juan. Uh, his portrait series uh, uploaded uh, via Facebook and it's a digital portrait uh, of different advocates and artists wearing face masks and there's an X, okay? to allude to no to uh, to the bill, the anti-terrorism bill, no to violence, okay? Uh, next photo, please. Uh, and I'm privileged that uh, Bonnie Juan also made my own portrait uh, uh, as my own personal uh, uh, protest no, to uh, the killings happening in our country. And the last part that I want to share with you of what's happening during the pandemic is the online art and education, okay? And the first one is the most active, uh, uh, Viva XCon, uh, the Visayas Visual Arts uh, Exhibition and Conference uh, 2020, uh, organized by uh, uh, the uh, the artist community in Bacolod, uh, spearheaded by Charlie Co and uh, Manny Montilibano, and the title of their uh, conferences uh, is Dasun. Uh, when you say Dasun, it's a Hilagaynon term for what's next. No, uh, so it's a challenge, an invitation to respond. So pagkatapos ito, ano na? No. Pag, ni ani, unsan atong buhaton, okay? And the first, excuse me, the first series of the virtual conference, uh, uh, there are different topics, uh, art and business. Uh, next, uh, before, please. Uh, uh, you have art and education. Uh, I was privileged to be with uh, brother uh, Edmondo, Fernandez in this uh, panel, we talked about uh, art and education, context, creativity, and criticality. Uh, they also have a conversation on governance, uh, the arts, legislation, and uh, about the future, no? And they also have the role of uh, cultural agencies in developing uh, Visayan art community. So it's a very... Uh, the concern is uh, about the Visayan art uh, scene, and they also invited uh, speakers from all over the country in order to have a conversation with the Visayan art community. And they had a corresponding exhibition called Kalibutan, uh, and it's a it's a good uh, concept because Kalibutan means the world or the worldview, 
it talks also of consciousness about the mind okay uh, next slide please uh, Mani Muntilivan is uh, featured in Art Class magazine in their efforts to uh, to have uh, artists during the pandemic and their perspective, no, and they uh, empower the artists to take control of their Instagram account and to curate its content. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, you have last uh, December 2020, you have uh, artists uh, who are in the Philippines and how they struggle and strategize uh, during this pandemic. And you will find the uh, recorded video in the YouTube site of Aviva XCon. Next, please. Uh, they also have artist initiative in challenging times featuring uh, Charlie Co. Art Heels Fundraising, Precious Liano and Alex Baluyot, uh, Art Initiatives in Challenging Times. And they have an upcoming uh, seminar. Next, please. Uh, so, so artists explore intimacies and communities of practices. Uh, like February uh, 27, this coming Saturday, Banyanials in the New Normal, okay? Uh, looking at the Thailand Biennial, okay, and there's an island special, uh, the artist initiatives in Leyte and Samar. So uh, Viva XCon, especially the conferences, have expanded uh, from the first series during the conference itself and continued on for this year. And it's a good uh, opportunity, especially for the design artists to, to learn more about the art ecology in uh in the visayas next slide please you also have archival projects uh next slide please uh this is the green papaya archives after 20 years of uh existence green papaya decided to close the actual space but they are still active uh virtually and in partnership with Asian Art Archives, they were able to get a grant to archive uh, many of their uh, materials. Okay, uh, we have some uh, technical uh, problem, so we'll just uh, wait for a bit. But uh, Green Papaya is one of the pioneering uh, artists uh, run spaces, no alternative art spaces in the in the country, and. They have so many important uh, collection for future res researches, uh, for future uh, to archive this uh, history in in the Philippines, especially on uh, alternative art spaces and the uh, uh, and the exhibitions and the works and the artists that uh, were part of this uh, green papaya. Okay, so. We'll just uh, wait for a bit. Uh, there's some technical problem. So here in this art uh, education uh, initiative during the pandemic, you see uh, galleries, museums, and artists uh, providing online conversations for ongoing uh, learning in the arts. Okay. Uh, and interesting that the uh, uh, audience are not limited to the local uh, public, but also international. Okay. So we can uh, proceed with the slides. Okay. So aside from the Green Papaya Archive, actually they're already in phase one. You can visit their link on Facebook and you can it will uh, link you to the Asian Art Archives based in Hong Kong, and you will find materials there uh, that you will find interesting uh, for research and how uh, alternative spaces have developed in the, in the country. Uh, UP Vargas Museum has also provided us with online guide for their collection. Uh, this is in collaboration with the School of Humanities, uh, 
fine arts, social sciences, history, and other fields related to the exhibition in the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Okay, it's uh, the the guide will be reproduced. Okay, and watch out for the uh, new uh, study guide provided by the museum. So this is also a good example of how they supplement uh, uh, learning, especially for the arts, okay? Next slide, please. Uh, Purita Kalao Foundation uh, Incorporated has also these 10 uh, episodes entitled Bridging the Gap where they collaborated with the UP School of uh, uh, Department of Art Studies. Uh, and the professors are engaging with the works of artists in their collection, like Nena Sagil, Julie Luch, Ophelia Teki, and Napoleon Abueba, okay? Uh, so it's also in, an interesting uh, series to watch okay, for continuing education. So these are just examples. I know uh, many museums like Atene Art Gallery, MCAD, uh, they also have their other forms of uh, art education online. So uh, you cannot, we cannot limit ourselves with the on-site uh, learning. Uh, but during the pandemic, what's available to us are these online webinars, seminars, and learning modules. Okay? So as a way of uh, summarizing from this initial survey, uh, let me share my reflections. There are four. Uh, I, I sense art as an empathetic response to others. Secondly, art as a reflective uh channel for self and community. Thirdly, art as a critical engagement with society. And fourthly, art provides ongoing uh, learning, okay? So next slide, please. Uh, to explain some of these reflections, first, art as an empathetic response to others, okay? Uh, I see that the fundraising art projects are not just ethical and aesthetic responses of artists. These projects have manifested the ameliorative aspect or the transformative aspect of art. Artists have truly empathized with the sufferings, struggles, and pains of others. Artists constantly wrestle with life and its pain in order to make sense of their own existence. Okay. Secondly, uh, second slide, please. Art as a reflective uh, channel for self and community. In the works of the artists that I have initially surveyed as a response to the pandemic, art becomes a channel for ref ref reflexivity on how artists are affected by the pandemic from the socioeconomic aspect, environmental, health, spiritual, to psycho-emotional aspects. In a way, art becomes a kind of mirror for self-reflection or self-reflexivity, okay? Art is also like a window through which artists show us how society, its peoples, cultures, and systems aggravate or lessen the impact of COVID-19 virus. Thus, through these acts of mirroring and opening of windows, artists have imagined the new order or the new disorder brought about by the pandemic and have proposed to us new ways of being in this new world. Next slide, please. And from the works of uh, artists, uh, community like CAP, we can see art as a critical engagement with society. And we affirm that art has always been engaged with society, especially the lives of people in their plight for a just, meaningful, and better world. In this presentation, the artists and the artist collectives have initiated art and civic projects to advocate against injustice, violence, poverty, exploitations, and corrupt systems in solidarity with people, especially with the marginalized sectors. Uh, 
Many of them have provided counterpoints to the prevailing popularist culture, authoritative regime, and the era of fake news in order to safeguard our democratic spaces for dissent, discourse, and development. And lastly, uh, on how art uh, also provides us with ongoing learning, okay? So next slide, please. So, okay. So, art has uh, provided us with new platforms of ongoing learning. Okay. Uh, we have to affirm that many art institutions, galleries, museums, and even uh, commercial galleries okay, have provided us with ongoing learning and participating in conversation that matters, involving the task of asking difficult, relevant, and right questions through webinars, online modules, and online conversations. In this new world order or disorder, there are online resources available in the country and in the world, like up-to-date art news across the globe, network of creatives worldwide through social media, scanned copies of critical theories and art histories, and accessible art collections through virtual galleries in local, international galleries and museums. And though art and education have been disrupted by the pandemic, this provided an opportunity to explore new modes of artistic and curatorial practices for ongoing learning. Okay, so that's my presentation for today. Uh, thank you for joining us. And I think uh, uh, Rave will uh, facilitate the conversation if you have some questions or comments with regards to the presentation for this afternoon so thank you so much thank you so much father jason for the very interesting um discussion no, about about art i'm so sorry uh, by the way guys to our viewers at home kay medyo um naglisod mi sa atong signal um since we have this um coming uh bagyo din his uh visa yeah so according to rave uh there is this uh impending uh, typhoon coming to the Visayas. So there are some uh, technical uh, uh, glitches in the uh, internet connection, okay? So we'll upload this video uh, later on in our YouTube channel and in Facebook so that you can also um, itweak lang namo ni siya kay para makat na to ang katong mga awkward na to ang mga putol -putol, uh, <laughs> okay. later on. Um, for uh, those of our um, audiences nga na ay kanang questions, you can post them in the comment section um, so that Father Jason can answer it. And actually, we have gathered three already. Nata yung mga pangutana din, hi? Um, <laughs> first question, Gikanisia from uh, Mr. Orland uh, James Rumarate. So, uh, ang yung question, Father, is that, so can we say that art became a coping mechanism of non-artists during the pandemic? Ang yung sigurong pasabot, Ani, is that um, we've noticed ang kanibitaw mga uh, mga netizens as we call them nga, are starting to post um, like videos of them singing, performance art, um, posting videos of them painting, drawing during their free time sa, sa pandemic. So can you consider this action as a co coping mechanism to what happened to, to us during the pandemic? Uh, yes, Rave. Uh, thank you for your question, Orlan. I think Art is not just exclusive for artists in expressing their own uh, experiences during the pandemic, but uh, our own people, uh, non-artists, can also explore 
art as a way of coping uh, during the pandemic no and i also i'm also giving i'm only giving you an example from the visual arts and we know there are many fo art forms like music film uh, dance so maybe you can consider the TikTok in dancing and singing and performing as a way of coping with stress brought about with the pandemic. But some people are also using uh, uh, visual art themselves. You know, they have discovered painting and drawing during the pandemic. But art has a function during the pandemic, and one of its function is not just expression but also coping with the pandemic and art has this quality to help us cope with our emotional and uh, psychological stresses that is why there's also a branch in art called art therapy okay thank you okay thank you hello miss heidi okay uh, so much fun. thank you for your question Okay, so this is from Miss Heidi Palapar. Hi, Father Jason. Kumusta? I'm interested in your Ikebana, which you've been doing and featuring in your post during the height of the pandemic. Can you discuss about it? Why did you choose such medium? Uh, uh, thank you, Miss Heidi, for your question. Actually, uh, the flowers as a medium has been part of my medium already. Uh, because I, I'm interested in how plants uh, bloom and also wither. No? Uh, I have used plants in my exhibitions, like in Indonesia and in uh, Project Space Filipinas, where I had uh, 1,000 uh, 1, roses hung from the ceiling of the gallery, and they are left to dry. Okay, And 1,000 is suggestive of the excessive uh, number of people who are killed because of extrajudicial killings. I've been fascinated with uh, plants and uh, flowers, no? But during the pandemic, uh, there was a need to uh, enliven our online masses because of the uh, pandemic nga, and then we need to reach out to our uh, community uh, to pray with them Okay, so part of that uh, parang alternative setup in a studio, not in a church, was to put flowers, no? So, and then I discovered that uh, uh, arranging flowers, and I also study online uh, some Ikibana schools, no? Uh, though not formally, and I also read some books, and the main inspiration would be the plants and flowers themselves that I find in our garden, okay? And when the lockdown eased up, we have donors who do give us some flowers. So the inspiration for the arrangement would be the oriental style, especially from Ikebana, and the western style of still life arrangements, and also the readings in our liturgical seasons, in the church, like Christmas, Advent, like for this Advent, mostly I just use uh, leaves and uh, twigs. And lastly, from nature itself, okay? Uh, it helps me get up early in the morning uh, to look so for some leaves and plants and flowers, no? And it's my way of connecting with nature uh, in this time of the pandemic. Okay. So, um, thank you so much, Father. Our last question. Um, okay, from Wave Support. Actually, okay, ang kaning last question, kagikan ni sa mama, which is watching from Surigao City. So, I hope wala lay kanang baha o guwan din ma. <laughs> Did the international art scene have the same reaction to the pandemic, like how art became a reflection of the quarantine situation and lockdown? So, asking sa kadang unsa po nahitabo gawas sa Philippines if the same ba pod ang ang art scene dito no uh, kamo sa ma'am Fabria you know dili wala kayo mo na affected sa bagyong auring okay thank you for your question I, I think the four themes that i have gathered uh, the first one is how art can be uh, a way of reaching out to communities uh, through fundraising uh, I have not, 
maybe it's also done in other countries uh uh but that is very strong here in the in the country but social activism and socially engaged art has been there even uh before pre-pandemic no artists have been uh, active in advocating for uh, social political causes no uh number three yung ongoing education don malakas ang international scene so there are so many webinars online uh, that you can attend the only problem is time zone <laughs> sometimes it's morning early morning here <laughs> and then diba? so the time zone is important no and also challenging but i think that's one of the major uh uh opportunities uh especially of how international scene are dealing with the pandemic by uh showing to us their collection through uh, virtual websites uh creating webinar okay and even the biennials and uh major exhibitions are also uh, art fairs rather are also online okay so yeah so young market and educational uh platforms are nasa online na yeah okay so bobit of the father no nga kasagaran pud karon because of of the the pandemic the quarantine and the lockdown we've really started to explore bitaw explore the the online scene and showing um art having webinars having exhibits and all that and it's yeah. it's nice nga kanang makit-an pud sa ubang tao ang uh on si tawag ani makitan pod sa ubang tao o kung saan ma-offer um, sa ato ang local art and we also see the international scene as well. So, mm. dili rata ka ng quarantine, dili ta kagawas and all that, but we, we can still access those mm. those art mm. out there. No. Mm. Uh, sige, sir. No, interesting lang kasi because of the online platform through technology, uh, networks are more accessible now internationally and global for example if you are somebody from germany and you're interested in what's happening in the visayas you can join the virtual exhibitions and the online webinars of the viva xcon okay so so yon yun yung uh one advantage but of course we know that not many people have access to the internet or they have poor connections it's also challenging no and i'd like to also highlight that there are also other artists they are not only displaying their artworks in social media and having a website on their own but they're also exploring the the medium itself the medium is the virtual medium and they created exhibition virtually uh like for example the case of cologne and an art street artist from cebu uh his exhibition is through a virtual space and meron din siyang virtual galleries meron din mga virtual artworks and the question then is what kind of uh works are these uh are these uh, works to stay even after the pandemic no what kind of artworks will artists produce uh uh virtually uh yung mga ganung challenges at opportunities yes very true so, um, Father, lastly, do you have any um, uh, parting words or message to, to our audiences, uh, to our audience, rather, our audience and um, artists, hopeful artists, nga nagtanaw na to with with what's going on with with the art scene and us being in in, um, in the heights of uh, the pandemic. So, kana ngatong last, Father. Okay, thank you, Ray. I just like to have two points. The first one is gratitude. Uh, to Casa Gorordo and the Ramon Aboides Foundation Incorporated for giving me this opportunity to share my own uh, thoughts and researches as well, especially with the art that has been produced during the pandemic since last year and how artists have responded to this kind of crisis and created opportunities for themselves and for the public. Okay. So thank you, uh, Rave, uh, Martel, uh, Florencio, Heidi, and Joey Bautista, and the team of Casa Gorordo and Rafi. Uh, secondly, in terms of art, uh, 
though art and education has been disrupted during the pandemic again uh, we are in this critical time and this critical time provides us with an opportunity to explore the potential of art as a kind of response to this new world order or new world disorder okay and my challenge is imagine explore learn cooperate create and empathize okay imagine explore learn cooperate create and empathize thank you thank you so much thank you so much father jason for accepting our invitation for this talk um, you have imparted uh, very valuable and interesting information to me, to our audience and, um, and our YouTube channel. And it will stay in the Casa Gorordo Museum uh, Facebook page. Thank you so much, Father okay. Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Amping kanunay. Sige, Father. Kamusa din ha? Amping san. Sige. So, guys, for those of you, again, who'd like to watch and re-watch our um, CGM talk from Tufel and our Facebook page, and we also have um, the Casa Gorordo uh, website up and running where you can check out our online exhibits. We have an exhibit about Maria Cacao, um, exhibit about our... Um, Cebuano uh, Heroes. We've also launched our new uh, virtual museum here in Casa Grodo. We are, I think we are the first in uh, Cebu and in the Visayas to have a virtual museum and virtual tour. So you don't hesitate to check out our um, website at casagrodomuseum.org and also visit www.facebook.com slash casagrodomuseum to see updates from our uh, museum. Now, we've also launched, uh, bago lang jod, we've launched our Casa Gorodo Museum shop sa Facebook, Gihapon, where you can find selections from uh, our souvenir shop. There is a museum. Now, we have been uh, posting since uh, early January. So, naana tayong mga on-sale items dito that if you'd like, you can message us and you can buy them. Okay? So again, thank you so much. One for one. So napotol na sad no. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for being with us this afternoon and joining the CGM talk entitled "Art as a Response: The Local Art Scene During the Pandemic." See you again at Casa Gorda Museum.